Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 17 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorial. In this video, we will talk about controllers in MVC and we will create them practically. This is continuation to part 16, models in ASP.NET Core MVC. So please watch it before proceeding to this one. I shared the link in the description. So controllers are the brain of ASP.NET Core application. They process incoming requests, perform operations on model data, and selects views to be rendered to the user. And this is the flow that we had discussed in part 13 of this series. So you can see in MVC pattern, for end user, controller is the only way end user can send requests to our application. So when the end user specify any URL or goes to any URL by clicking on any link, Request first go to the controller. Obviously middleware is there, so I'm not talking about that in terms of MBC pattern. So and controller, which is the artificial brain of our application, decided what to do with this request. All right. So let's see the key point around the controller. So the controller is a normal C sharp application or a C sharp class with CS extension. Obviously it depends on which language you choose to code on. So we need to append the controller at the end of the class name. So for example, in general, when we need to create an employee class, we write employee.cs, right? So instead of employee.cs, we need to write employee controller.cs. Next, this class should be inherited by controller base class. And this is really important. So we can place the controller class anywhere but it is advisable to place it within the controller folder to follow MVC pattern, right? So just like we have methods in normal class. So whenever we create a class, we have methods there, right? To perform some activity. Similarly, we have methods in controller class as well. And what we call them, we call them action. All right, enough theory. Let's create them practically. And this is the project which we are working with. So as per key points discussed, the controller is a normal class with a CS extension. Obviously here, I'm doing code in C-sharp. That's why I'm referencing CS in this video. All right, so let's create that class. So right click on the folder, add a new class, and let's name it employ. Okay, so now next point is we need to append the controller in the class name. So let's rename it and append the controller. The third point is it should be inherited by the controller base class. So let's implement the inheritance. And controller is present under microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc let's add the reference so no magic here the controller class is already created by microsoft where they have already implemented many feature to make our application run and follow the mvc pattern right so we only need to learn how to follow these steps and the fourth point is we need to place controller class within the controller folder to follow MVC pattern, which we had already done it. Next, we need to create a method, which we term them, what, what we call them action in MVC. All right, so let's create it. So a no normal method like public string, let's say index. And let's return a normal string, let's say pro concepts. So done, we are all set. We have implemented our first ever controller in ASP.NET Core application. Congratulations. Let's run the program. Let's replace the URL by appending slash employ slash index, which is our index method. So nothing, we are expecting it to print pro concepts, but we are getting terminator. Can you guess where it is coming from? Yes, it is coming from our middleware startup.cs class. 
And can you guess why it is not going to our controller action method? It's simply because we haven't prepared our middleware to process such kind of request. We haven't implemented routing yet. So that we will learn in our next video. All right. So if you have any queries related to the content of this video, do ask me on comments. Till then, thanks for watching.